All right, we've got breaking LOL Esports news that apparently the entire LOL Esports ecosystem is going to be shifting. This is the Riot Games June update that was promised a few months ago. I'm going to be reacting to, first and foremost, the dev update, which has John Needham and Chris Greeley in it first, and then we're gonna read through the article and see all the changes. So this is my first reaction. Full disclosure, somebody did tell me last night that apparently we're getting like a north versus south thing in the LCS, but that is the only thing I was told, the only bit of information that I know. Don't know what teams are involved, don't know anything else, so we will find out right now. Hey everyone, I'm John Nito, Hello, John. president of esports at Riot Games. And I'm Chris Greeley, Chris. the head of strategy for LOL Esports. Hey Chris, an amazing time in Chengdu at MSI. Yeah, the tournament was great this year. I mean, Andre and Pooh stole our thunder, but what they failed to mention is that this year's MSI broke every viewership record we have ever had okay. for MSI. Happy that MSI did well. We took a lot well. of feedback from cool. the community Let's. last year, <laughs> and our format changes this year were really well received. So I want to say thank you to all of our pros uh, who made the trip to China to compete, still and to everyone who tuned in to watch for this MSI. Yeah, it was amazing. Earlier this year, I shared an update to our team partnership model for the LCK, yes, LCS, that is a and LEC, big update. and how we're changing the way our revenue model works with a focus on sharing digital revenues with the teams yes. that compete Including in our tier that $500 one leagues. Today, game. we wanted to share the next phase of our plans, a unified split structure for all of our leagues, okay. the addition of a third international event to our calendar, okay. and proposed changes to our leagues in the APAC and Americas regions. We believe these oh, changes APAC are necessary to strengthen okay. our path toward the long-term sustainability of our Wasn't sport. expecting APAC. Overall, we're proposing to reduce the number of teams in our tier one ecosystem. Yes, we kind of knew a reduction was coming. We're doing this to strengthen team participation in the new global revenue pool. Yes. Basically, with fewer teams to share revenues with, all the teams will get an increase yes, in their and revenue. and they'll be more sustainable. So it's actually smart this to play how much people might not want to player talent into our best teams and improve the overall fan experience by making it easier to follow our sport and hopefully create more high quality matches. Yes. After these changes, League of Legends Esports could look similar to Valorant Esports or the BCT. Uh, we have taken a lot be... of lessons from the BCT. Okay, yeah, hopefully we learn we from the bad parts too, with, because I know a lot of people are not happy with how the Americas works right in now. In its first two years. So starting in 2025, okay. we're proposing that Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Macau, Japan, Vietnam, and Oceania Combine forces into a single multi-region. Oh, region. okay. So VCS. This means that the top yep. teams and okay, top there talent we go. in these so regions and VCS will be competing now against each other in more competitive games all together. with fresh new rivalries. Wow. In addition, we'd also like the LCS, CB Law, and, and LLA yep, to come together as an Americas. Okay. League. The LCS and CB Law would compete in the North and South Americas conferences, respectively, with those okay, current leagues retaining the six of league. their current teams, plus a team each from the LLA. The final oh, slot in each conference teams. would be reserved for promotion and relegation from the tier two system in each conference. We yes, believe this promotion and relegation. Okay, that's fine, but like. And expands players' opportunities to compete oh, at the tier one. Oh man, who are we losing? After these changes, there would be five leagues in our tier one ecosystem the Americas, APAC, the LEC, okay, LCK, and LPL. and LPL. Okay, but who are there we are losing? There are more details on these changes in our lolesports.com article. Okay, so Speaking we'll read the article in a second. We are adding a third event to the 2025 okay. calendar that starts with regional play at the start of the year. Each of the now five regional leagues would have a single team qualify for the international event as part of okay, this so tournament. Okay, so what? So basically, old MSI and get in to March. watch the best team from each region play against every other region in a round robin format before crowning a champion through a bracket stage. Yeah. It's going to be super exciting. So it's old We're MSI in March this tournament and then as new a way to MSI with different competitive formats. In for 2025, in May, we'll be using a version of eight. fearless draft mode in the regional and international portions of the competition. Fearless, fearless draft is, is coming so everywhere. Cool. Okay. Yeah, very excited about that. Okay. Finally, so wait, why is the LCS the holding of off then? This new international tournament, we're using this as an opportunity to refine regional split structures. Going forward, okay. each region will open the year with the new tournament or tournament split, and then continue on to two slightly shorter splits throughout the year, which will end with MSI and a regional championship, respectively. Champions from each region will be crowned at this regional league championship really? rather than at the end of each split. And of course, the season will culminate, as always. Okay, I need to read the article because this part's a little no, confusing, not gonna lie. Okay, now let's read through this article real quick to see what is potentially missing or what I did not uh, 
pick up through the video or like what was kind of vague. So we know the general structure is going to be three splits with three international events. Fearless draft into tier one, and we'll see from there. Okay, so they clearly haven't finalized which version of Fearless Draft that they're going to put in yet, because it definitely seems like we don't exactly know what's going on there. So Split 1, new event, Split 1, MSI, then a regional championship, and then Worlds. Okay, so they, okay, I'm kind of confused, I guess, on, like, how do you qualify? So for Split 1, like, the Americas have a North and South Conference. How is, like, the regional final... Okay, let's find out. New split structure. With a new international event, we'll also refine our regional split structure next season. All regions will begin the new national first split. Second split will qualify teams for MSI. Great, we know that. Americas. The LCS in North America is seeing an upswing in sentiment achieved over the last year. Proposed new business model, LCS and CB Law will compete as North and South conferences. Each conference will maintain six of its existing partner teams, integrate one team from the LLI, so there will be seven teams. Oh, God. And reserve one guest spot for promotion relegation through the Tier 2 system for a total of eight teams per conference. So this is not going to be like the VCT where each and every year you have a team that kind of goes up and stays there for two years and then drops out. It seems like it's just pure promotion relegation for that one team each and every split. Okay, so here's how, okay, this is what I wanted to know. Split one teams would compete within their respective conferences with the top performer qualifying for co cross conference play where a single team will qualify for the new global tournament. Okay, so basically you play, you know, South plays South, North plays North, and then they meet in a playoffs that will combine and we'll, we'll split out one winner that goes to MSI mini. Split two, for MSI, the top team from each conference would secure one slot for a total of two Americas teams. Okay, so then we'll definitely have one CB, low, one Americas, or one LCS, which is interesting. So basically you could do like a double round robin best of seven into like a playoff with just us. And then for split three, an Americas regional championship that would determine the three teams. So we, basically it'll be a, in a bridge split. Assuming there's what, eight total teams per region, you'll probably, I don't know, wipe out four, the top four qualify to this regional uh, qualifier and then the eight teams from north and south slog it out in the fall we plan to release further details on the selection process for teams in the north and south conferences outline the competitive structure for each split share how we plan to enhance cross conference play and provide updates to the tier two system throughout so we're not going to know the updates to tier two for quite a while we can skip the apac stuff so in terms of the international event slots, we're looking at five total teams, 10 teams, 17 teams. Okay, so, I mean, it is gonna make the Golden Road definitely more challenging, and I'm not sure how much weight that first event will end up having. Maybe a lot, but we'll, I mean, we'll see. Look, at the end of the day, it is a is a way to generate revenue by a third international event, which is always a good thing with digital revenue ex that exists there. That global revenue pool is like the main point of conversation. So in theory, you're just gonna have five regions a bunch of teams there that they will split the revenue within. I've already made a separate video if you haven't seen it already on uh, the different or the GRP as they've set it up. So it looks like that is officially going to be uh, the plan moving forward. And honestly, my initial takeaways from all this is that I'm a little scared as a 100 Thieves fan because obviously we have eight teams that ex are already in the system now. If I had my choice, I would get rid of Immortals and Dignitas, but I'm not going to lie to you that like cost-cutting measures are a very real thing. And I hope that Hunter Thieves never abandons the LCS and never leaves, but like part of me is scared. And like maybe what if they do get like there is a clear chance that like other people can try and get in this. Like this is basically like a whole new franchising application more or less. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to message uh, David Higdon, uh, who works with Riot, to see if I can get a, a answer on uh, the selection process to find out from there. Like, is this just going to be open to everybody? Is there a cost? Like, what what is going to happen here with this? Is it just, like, the best eight teams get in? Like, obviously, C9TL are locked. Like, is FlyQuest locked? Like, I... I don't know. Like, it feels like we're entering, like, a, I mean, we are. We're literally entering a new era of League of Legends, and it's terrifying yet exciting 
at the same time. Give me a few days to digest this, to talk about it on the podcast, and I will include more comprehensive thoughts in the pit, and we'll talk about it then. But for now, I got to go. I got a meeting I got to get to. Hope you all enjoyed. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like down below. Obviously, we'll talk about everything LCS, as I will be mostly your uh, Northern Conference uh, point of view, but we'll also still talk about the Southern Conference because we have to keep tabs on them the entire time. Anyways, that's it for me. I'll catch you all later. Adios.